I don't have a song tonight. Hey. Hey. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Okay. I can't hear the song. We're going to have to just, I guess, sing it ourselves. Can you sing it? I don't know this new one. Yeah. It's, uh, it's called a, a Small Spark. It's a song about inspired by the Book of James. But, oh, anyway. okay. Um, Perfect. So, yeah, we're just, it's kind of weird not having a song. Look at, can you see this? Behind I can. This see? Is daylight. Daylight. It's, it's still daylight yeah. at 8 o'clock. It is. This is a good thing. <laughs> and it's, uh, what, 9 o'clock on the east? I don't know. Yeah. I can't do the math. Can't do the math. Yeah. Well, um, Do you have a producer? Tonight? I have no producer tonight. I don't know. Uh, this place is falling apart. Vacation or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Do, do we have anybody even watching? I can't uh, see. We have just a swipe. There we go. Swipe. Well, okay. One person. One. Oh. Is it me? It might be you, I, or it might be me. I don't know. Well, I'm definitely watching. Hey. Hey, there's somebody yeah, watching. Yeah, can you see? I can see it's, it's, her comment. You do too. I'm in the other room. What is. <laughs> oh. Lee, can you hear me all right? If the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Yeah. Situation. <laughs> I can't hear very well. I'm all stopped up. I think I got. It's not. It's not COVID for sure, but I don't know if it's like bronchitis. Let me back or, up a little bit. Yeah. So, if I sound a little stuffed up, that's why. <laughs> okay. Well, sorry. Are you, are you feeling bad? Or? Well, I, better than I was a couple of days ago. Okay. But it's. Uh, it's one of those things. I get it. I think I wanted to blame it on allergies, and, and maybe that is where it started, but uh, it worked its way into my lungs. And so, uh, well, but I feel, I'm feeling better. There's something going today. around, you know. Finish the week. That's the thing. Uh, goodness, it was a week. Yeah. At school. Now, these last few weeks, if you really want to know what it's like to be a teacher, come to school and spend a few hours during these last few weeks. Yeah. Oh, boy. Or better yet, go to the elementary school. And <laughs> then, then, you, then you'll know. No, Lisa, then you will. Lisa, she'll she'll let us know if there's a sound or visual problem. Please continue. Just yeah. trust me. So it will. Uh, <clears throat> you will. You will. Uh, you will be in favor of any amount of taxes to pay elementary teachers. <laughs> Uh, whatever they want. They whatever they want. Of, yeah. Yeah. Do whatever they want. Just yeah, open up your is. wallet and, yeah. I mean, I, I, high school is one thing, but I can't imagine fifth grade or uh, <laughs> something like that. So. Well, anyway. They, yeah, there is something going around. There's something going around. Um, yeah. And it's not COVID, but it's. It's no. just well, sickness. It's COVID is still going around, but not, not, right. not with me. Right. There's something else going around. Um, so James chapter one, this is, uh, th this letter is so great. Mm -hmm. It's so instructive. Have you read these? Have you read these verses before? I have. You heard chapter one? I have. 
goodness gracious. Yeah. Have you read what we're going to read tonight? It's I just well just did for the first time. <laughs> You've never heard these this, verses this, before. This, well, this is revelatory. This is I mean, if you want to know how to how to act. Um, yeah. These. These verses are, are, are it. In, in studying this, excuse me, I'm going to have to reach for some water. Maybe. Well, maybe I can get my producer to bring in some water to me. <laughs> I'll just ask like that. Uh, in, in my studying this, uh, something sort of different uh, hit me or hit me in a different way, I should say, than it, than it ever has. You know, these verses have been read and read, and they're, if anything's kind of lifted out of James, it would be, you know, it would be these verses. Thank you. <laughs> um, it would be these verses that uh, are, or the, or the very end. But, well... Verses, well, these verses two through uh, four or six. Yeah. yeah. So those those areas kind of get lifted out of there and and kind of held up as things that we like or or maybe we struggle with and and that's okay. But um, to read this whole thing, this whole letter at one setting is really good, and that's the way that's the way we should do it instead of yeah, parsing sure. it. Out, but we, you know, for time's sake and all, uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna. It is nice, yes, to read it as a whole, but it's also nice to dig in, right? And really look at a few of these, uh, some of these really uh, pertinent um, lessons that he that he yeah. has for us. And I think maybe it's it would be good to uh, read it first. As a letter, and then go back and and yeah. study it. Of course. Well, you know that's what they did. Well, right. When they got it, they would read the whole thing, and then read read it again, and then again, and then they yeah, and then they dive in. I think most likely that uh, right and, and get into the meat of it. Well, let's look. Uh, um, let's read nineteen through the end of the chapter. We're in James chapter one. Yes. Uh, for those of you that are joining us now, live or later. Uh, James chapter 1, verses 19 through, uh, what, 27? 27. Okay. Yeah. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he's religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religious is, religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. That's great. Got to preach. preach. <clears throat> and it has. And it has. Uh, we're reading from the same version tonight, the ESV, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I usually read from. So that's what I have tonight. So we're on the same page, wow. literally on the same page. Well, on page a, fourteen, thirteen, so I don't know where. I'm on the electronic page. <laughs> it's all one, all one page. page. One page. Mm -hmm. How long was your letter, James? Just one page. One. One electronic page. Okay. What do, what do you think? How do you think he would he would react to seeing his letter? I, I mean, well, 
You wonder about that. I do. Anyway. I would almost think it would be, he may say, you know, that's kind of what I expected because um, it's, there's a, there's a lot here. And I think he would be excited to know that okay. people, uh, you know, are, are still reading, still it? reading it and being instructed by it and mm-hmm. still struggling, maybe struggling with it. But and that these lessons are, are, are still applicable, that yeah. people have not changed and, all that much. And he would say, you know what, guys, this is uh, this came from the, the spirit of Christ. So I I really had nothing to do with it other than <laughs> writing it down. And, yeah. And these are these are the words that God wants wanted you to have. So um, he probably would think they're they're uh, they're even instructive to him, which mm-hmm. you know. So uh, in verse nineteen, know this. And again, here we go with the, the knowing, as we had in verse three, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, right? So he's saying, know this. It, it's important to know these things and not just uh, have to guess. You know, I, I want you to understand this. I want you to know this, uh, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Um, I... I have, uh, I, I looked up some verses. You know, th- these aren't new thoughts. These are really old thoughts uh, that he, that the Spirit brings over, sort of drags from the, uh, um, from the Old Testament. And um, so the first one there is, you know, be quick to hear and... If you look at Ecclesiastes five, and you may have, mm-hmm. uh, I do have this. Name. Had it, yeah. okay. Um, would you read Ecclesiastes five one and two? I, I have a yep. paper Bible, and I have in the flip through pages, so okay. it'll go quicker well, if you just read it. Mine has a link, right? A to link. It. Uh, so yeah, guard your steps when you go into the house of God. To draw near to listen is better than to offer the sacrifice of fools, for they don't know that they're doing evil. So, uh, th- this is a well. This is also a spot uh, uh, from Ecclesiastes. Oh, sorry, I didn't read read verse two. Yeah, read, read verse two. two. It's, it's yeah. yeah. Be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Yeah. Wow, I, I love that. it too. So when he says, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear. Um, it's it's sort of akin to this uh, this verse. You know, guard your steps. Ecclesiastes 5, 1 and 2. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Go near to listen rather than to offer a sacrifice full. So, um, hey, be quick to listen. Be quick to hear. Well, how how uh, how often do we are, do we listen to someone just enough to be able to respond? Are, are we thinking of right. a response rather than really right. listening and hearing what they have to say? Uh, we're thinking of what we can say in either an argument or an agreement mm-hmm. with that, rather than, uh, you know, or if they if they just want to tell us their story or their their issues or their problems, we're thinking, okay, well, what can I say then to make this better right. or to offer encouragement, rather than just sometimes we just don't need to say anything. Yeah, right. That's the best answer uh, to give. Um, you know, listening is. Very important, and uh, he's not. Well, these ideas are are um, old ideas, really. Uh, 
it, it's not really anything that's new. Of course, in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. But um, mm-hmm. uh, so, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak. Um, and I have, you know, Proverbs uh, ten nineteen. Yeah. Um, Seventeen twenty seven is better. Yes, I have that marked down too. That was good. Yeah. Uh, so ten, Proverbs ten nineteen. Um, sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, slow to speak. Yeah. Yeah, slow to speak. So 1727 of Proverbs says, Whoever restrains his words has knowledge, mm-hmm. and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Yeah. I like that. That is good. I want to have a cool spirit. A cool spirit, yes. Yeah. In, in every sense of the word. Uh, uh, absolutely. So, being slow to speak um, is something that, you know, they had heard, they've heard this before. Um, and most. I mean, most likely they're trying to live by this. It's a proverb. It's something that, um, but it, it's brought over into the uh, the New Testament for uh, for a reason, uh, for purpose. Uh, so he kind of he kind of puts all this together. And uh, hey, Melissa, good to see you on here. Um, he puts all this together. We're in J- uh, James chapter one. Verse 19 is where we are. So, uh, the slow to anger. Um, I have uh, Proverbs 14, 19, which you probably do too, or 14, 29. Yes. That. Um, Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who has a hasty temper exalts folly. Yeah. Mine says, uh, but, but one who is quick-tempered same thing tasty temper yeah Yeah. and so and you hear people say i've heard people say well i that's just who i am i just have right a bad temper and there's you know you just have to learn how to deal with that uh that's not what james says yeah Um, (laughs) he says you you have to well i mean obviously we don't we don't have to do anything we get a choice Mm -hmm. here but um if we want to produce the righteousness of God, verse 20, we, we cannot allow our anger to control our, uh, our actions. Yeah. Um, anger is a, a normal, natural emotion. Uh, God has anger. God, uh, Jesus had anger, but mm-hmm. it's when that anger controls our actions that's when mm-hmm. it produces, uh, well, sinfulness. Right. Hey, Drew, it's good to see you on here. Um, We're in uh, James chapter 1, verse 20. That's where we are right now. Um, So the word slow, I I looked that up, and it just means not hasty. Uh, Mm -hmm. And if you think about what we're talking about, um, being slow to anger, um, and then you look at... uh, the next phrase there and there's a reason why we need to be slow to anger and and the reasoning is this for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of god so here's here's what we need to remember that our anger is dangerous god's anger is on point God's anger is correct, always correct. Um, if God is angry, there's a reason, there's a good reason, and there's no doubt that that is what needs to be. Um, but our anger is dangerous because of what it produces. You, you see, he says that uh, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So, if I get angry at, you know, at, at someone, 
I have to I have to watch what I'm doing, watch what I'm saying, and how I'm saying it because the danger in that is that the what it produces it isn't isn't righteousness, isn't the righteousness well, of God or what is right in, even in the sight of God. Um, it, it goes back to verse fifteen. Yes. Uh, and he's talking about yes. being tempted and, and when when we're tempted if we let it go it will produce mm -hmm. uh, unrighteousness just like if we let our anger go or get too far yeah. it will produce unrighteousness mm -hmm. it's the same it's it's, a, it's it's parallel language here it's, it's same uh the same uh, thing here so um we just got to be careful but, we have to be right. careful and and really watch it it, absolutely, and we have to be people that understand that, um, you know, using the 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 idea. Of, well, Jesus drove out. You know, he he made a, a whip, and he drove people at tur turn tables over. I'm just kind of like Jesus. Well, probably not. You're probably not being like Jesus. Um, he was that way for a reason, and we need to dig and understand what what the reasoning was. Um, chances are you're not in that situation. Chances are you're not Jesus. Um, chances are you don't need to be turning over any tables. Chances are your anger, my anger, um, is not going to produce what God wants. I mean, it'll produce something. That, can anger damage relationships? Well, of course. You know, can, I mean, you just think of, of what is left in the wake of, of anger. Um, you know, a wake. If you've ever been on a boat, you look behind you, that's the wake. I mean, the water's disturbed, then it goes out, and it, it, and it, keeps, it going. keeps going. It doesn't it stop. Doesn't, until it you're, you're not going to stop it. That's, and that's the point, is that what's left in the wake of anger um, is not what not what God wants. And this is why um, this is why James says there's a reason that we're slow to anger. And the reason is that it doesn't produce what God wants it to produce. If we're not being godlike uh, necessarily in our in our anger. It's not producing righteousness. Mm -hmm. So we may I mean we have to be careful with people and situations I think um, because I mean social media is a great uh, it's a great tool but but we have to as Christians I mean if you're if you're regulated by the spirit of Christ then this one should should fit us um, we don't we don't display our anger or we um, well, as, as Scripture says, uh, uh, Paul says, don't let the sun go down uh, while you're still angry. In other words, take care of it. You need to take care of that because what it produces is not good. It's not good. Um, and what we, you know, what we say matters. And... Uh, you may not like, and not only what we say, but how, how we, say, we it. say it. Right? It 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 all matters. Um, and it's well. I think there's a verse that says something about giving an account of the words that we I say. Think so. um, and I think he's serious about that. Yeah. Um, so it may not seem like a big deal. Uh, how many times? Uh, and and you don't have to answer this, but I I will. But how many times have you typed? And deleted, typed and deleted yeah. some some comment or some post or whatever on social media that you want to make. You just want to just lambaste someone and you know or something that's going right. on and and you just and I I've done it so many times. Type delete. Yeah, and, type and delete. Nothing. Maybe you don't even have, you don't even have to type it. Just I mean, even today I was thinking, well, I could say this, and then you know. <laughs> My thing is, is, is uh, I, I realize that, hey, if I'm following Jesus, he won't let me get away with this. I mean, he's, 
is not going to let me do this. And I can do it if I that, want, but that thought did, yeah, it crossed my mind yesterday. And you, well, you know about this. I know I saw something in town that, and I took a picture of it. And um, man, I wanted to, I just wanted to to get that out there, and just you know. But I thought, and I really did think this, and and this is a, I'm not just saying this, but um, would you, does Jesus really want me to post this? Yeah. This kind of language or this kind of instant, because I knew what I know exactly what my what I was trying to do. Yes, this tra- kind of inflammatory yeah. thing. It, it, does he really want me? Is that really what I'm supposed mm-hmm. to be? Uh, doing here and so uh, I didn't I sent it to a few people <laughs> to get you know to to just because I, I you know close friends and family that I felt like I just had to I have to get it out I have to show <laughs> someone but I don't have to show everyone and I don't have to no. to spread that kind no. of uh, that kind of negativity uh, all over yeah. you know, the whole internet and in sight you know a, a big fight you know I know I know that there would be um, between you know people and so i didn't yeah. um and uh i'm glad i didn't but it still it makes me angry what i what i yeah. saw but uh, but what do i do with that whatever that said when it used to say something else it should make us yes. as angry right exactly yeah matter. i know i didn't like it when it said the other thing no. either and um everybody's going what are they yeah you know what we're talking about <laughs> you know exactly what we're talking about. anyway um, but yeah, so we're, we're held to a different standard. We are, um, you know, being the people of Christ. It doesn't mean we're better than other people or we think we're better than other people. It just means that we, we're trying to follow Christ and, and what, of course we're not better than no. anyone else. That, that, that's the whole point of of recognizing and being a Christian is we we realize that we're not better right. than than anyone. We ha- we are desperate for uh, uh, help to to rid ourselves of this sinful nature. We can, and and that's to me that's what this this Christian life is is about. It's it's not it's not I'm better at all. Yeah. It's it, it's I know I'm bad. I know I'm yeah. bad. It's almost I as need if... help. <laughs> It, it, it's almost as if, okay, we know we're sinners, so we're turning ourselves in, and and we turn ourselves over to Christ, and He actually does do what the correctional facilities in this nation cannot do, which is rehab people. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but not what I am saying is if we stick with Christ, if we turn ourselves in, and you know, like Paul, like Saul did. Um, you know, led to Ananias and, and, uh, hey, what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, wash away your sins, calling on his name. He does that. And then he, he, is, and the, uh, look at what Jesus does with him and for him. The, the one person that has the authority to lock us up and throw away. Right. Feet, That's right. Turns us loose. Yeah. He allows us to, uh, he, well, he allows us to be free because we become slaves to him. It, it's a, it's a, it's an odd thing that takes place. We, you know, we become fully committed. We, we turn our lives over. You know, like like Paul says, um, really, you don't belong to you anymore. You belong to him. And uh, and so this is what helps in those moments of anger. Exactly. Is, is not it's it's not that hey if you're a Christian you cannot ever be angry that's not what that's not what James is saying here at all right um, he's he's saying listen your anger if you let this go if you don't turn uh, and ask you know what how would Jesus handle this or what will Jesus allow me to get away with here if that's not part of your thought process then that anger is going to produce unrighteousness it, yeah. it just it happens and it happens every day um right. all over um and it can happen to us and it does happen mm-hmm. to us um i you know i'm i'm sure uh, I'll, i won't speak for you but my anger sometimes does produce unrighteousness um it just proves james's point right. here 
Uh, so we're not above that, um, but we, like, like I think we were getting at, we do find some avenues or some ways to, to, uh, well, to avoid those situations. Right. And, you know, so he goes on and he says in verse 22, um, well, well, verse 21, therefore, because of this, um, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word. We're, we're in James chapter one, by the way, verse twenty-one, um, which is able to save your souls. Mm-hmm. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, not a doer, is like a man who looks at a at his natural face in a mirror, and uh, for uh, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he's like, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, will be blessed in his doing. So, James is really saying, the word of God has this corrective power. It really does. Have you ever been a hearer? And not a doer. Yeah, yeah of course. We have. Uh, we all do that. Or have you ever been a, I don't want to hear that part of the word? Uh, right. I think we've all done that too. Um, but this, the language he uses here, the perfect law, mm-hmm. as opposed to, to the law that was, not that it was imperfect, but it we it was it was not sufficient enough to save us. Mm-hmm. The law because we we because we were imperfect. Yeah. But now this law, this new law of liberty, um, this is able to save us. This is what you know. This is the implanted word in verse twenty-one <laughs> that's able to save our souls. This yeah. is much better. And the book of Hebrews talks about this. This right. word, this law, is so much better. Than the than the mosaic law, the old law, right? And this law is able to save us, not because we are better at it, but because Jesus did it for us. Well, exactly, and and so the proof is in what we do, not just what we say, which is what James is kind of all about. So the proof of what we do is, hey, listen, verse twenty six. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, uh, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Just worthless. Um, mm-hmm. You don't bridle your tongue. It, it 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 doesn't matter. That's big. Uh, yeah, he and he goes on in in the second chapter and explains talks about the the tongue. Right. Uh, a little more uh, in detail here, but if you can't watch and control what you say, then it doesn't matter what you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that, that's the way I, I read this. Um, well, if you cannot control the way you speak and how you you speak to people and mm-hmm. the things that you say to them, then your religion, whatever, whatever, uh, traditions or yeah, uh, rituals or whatever you do it's worthless you might as well just stay home yeah uh, well and it's the person that's speaking whatever they want to speak we're to speak the words of christ paul says in colossians we're to have them dwelling in us richly and uh, he also says the the word of god is the the sword the the spirit sword it's it's what the spirit uses and if we have the spirit of Christ living in us, then we are to keep in step. We are to be led by that spirit. And the words of Christ must be in us. We must know what Jesus says so that we can do. Because otherwise, what comes out of our mouths is just going to be whatever we think. And you're right. You go back to that person that might think or say, well, this is just who I am. You just have to get used to this. Well, I wouldn't take that to God. I wouldn't go. I, I wouldn't take that to God and say, "Here I am. You just take. You just 
you just take it, take me like I am because I'm not changing. There's a big problem there. And so James is a warning to people that want to just kind of go their own way or say whatever well, they it, want to or, or what, be angry. What you're saying about the, the word being a sword, uh, it's, it's, it's an offensive weapon uh, that Paul talks about in, in Ephesians. Um, it's the only offensive weapon, right. but it is not to be used on other people um, by any means. It, it is to cut our, it into ourselves. It is to divide, what is it, bone from marrow yeah. of ourselves. It, it's, it's for us to examine ourselves and really uh, figure out, is this, is this worth believing? Right. Is, is this word, can this word do what it says that it does? It's not for us to swing at at other no. people uh, by any means at all. And I think we've gotten that wrong uh, over the years. I, I've heard that and I've used that, um, that it's an offensive weapon to strike down any kind of, you know, uh, error and, and, and false teaching. And I get that, but it's ultimately, um, it's ultimately used to, um, to cut myself, it cut to the heart of me. What, what did Peter, when, when he, preach that gospel sermon in mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2. The, the people who heard it were cut in their hearts. Yeah. Um, the word, it was the word that did that right. um, to them. And so uh, this word, um, if we just hear it and we don't do anything with it, if we don't change our, our, our attitudes and our actions, then, um, well, it's like we look at ourselves in a mirror and then forget immediately. Right. What, what we look like. Exactly. Well, he goes on to say this, uh, so religion that is pure and undefiled before God, um, God the Father, is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. It's, <laughs> wow, that's not what we would think, right? I mean, uh, the religious. Well, that second part, yeah, the unstained from the world. I can kind of get that, yeah. But, but yeah, this the first part. Yeah. But this goes right along with what James is 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 talking about, um, as far as faith goes. I'll show you my faith by what I do. And if you think if you think that um, you're just going to bring to God. Uh, you know, whatever you're wanting to bring to him and say, you know, uh, here, here it is. This is, this is who I am. Uh, God is interested in purity and, uh, things that aren't, aren't defiled. You know, you look in the Old Testament, you can, you know that from the Old Testament. You, you get that idea. Um, it's like bringing a blemished sacrifice. You don't do that. Um, well, one thing I'm, I notice here, it, it doesn't say anything about uh, worship. Yeah. Your religion is not your worship. I mean, pure religion doesn't have anything to do with worship. It's what, that's, that's the way I'm reading this anyway here. Pure religion has to do with how you treat people, especially disadvantaged people, and how you, uh, well, unstained from the world, how you don't allow mm -hmm. the, uh, the evil of, of the world to, to affect you. Um, but it doesn't say anything about here or what I, the, and again, this is just my, my, uh, my, my understanding is that it's not about your worship. It's about mm -hmm. how you treat people, how, and this, this, this goes all. This goes to the Gospels, uh, right? This is all through that. How did you know? How did Jesus treat people? Well, and if you look what Paul look at the things that Paul wrote about um, our our time, well, just how we treat one another as brothers and sisters in Christ, um, and and our uh, our assembly time when we're together. I mean, how that goes. Um, it, if we don't understand what James is saying, 
it, it sort of yes. undoes all of that. I mean, you could take the right. Lord's Supper together as a group. Um, I mean, you know, with your brothers and sisters. But if you don't have in place what James is talking about, it sort of undoes all that. It doesn't. That's that kind of thing doesn't really matter if mm-hmm. if you're just giving full vent to your anger and saying, "Hey, God made me this way," you know. Um, if you're not paying attention to the things that James says, you know, uh, this is what purity looks like. This is what undefiled religion looks like, taking care of um, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And this is these are these are daily uh, things for us to do. These are how we how we act and how we treat people daily not what we do once or twice a week uh together you know as a as a body and i'm not i'm not trying to say that th- those things aren't important right. that's not what i'm getting at but it, like you said if we don't get this part right then what we do on sunday really doesn't matter well and um, yeah and actually this is part of that i mean really if you stop and think about it um uh does your does your uh, yeah yours says visit right? Um, yes, visit in their affliction. Yeah. Well, let me. I'm going to look this up then. The producer says it's time, so we need to stop. Oh. But. Uh, so she showed up. Well, that's she nice. She showed up. No brownies. She did. did she show up just to say it was time? She did. She popped her head in the door and said, "It's time." You know, I know what that means. Um, yes. So, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is to look after, mm-hmm. look after, or visit. So, I mean, same thing. Orphans and their distress. Well, I have this word, episkeptomai, episkeptomai, um, I'm no, not a, a Greek scholar, to look at observantly, to inspect, uh, to go see or visit, mm-hmm. to visit for the purpose of comfort and relief. Yeah. That seems to be the, uh, the context mm-hmm. here. So, um, yeah. Well, um, this is good. It's rich and deep, and uh, we urge you to, to read the whole letter, and we'll come back um, next week. Is it uh, our, is this your last week at um, OC? Yes, yes, I'm. I am officially You're off the chain. Uh, done with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so next <laughs> off the chain. next week we'll actually be physically together. Should be. Should be. Yeah. Well, something happens. But, uh, okay. And then, yeah. We'll have some brown. If, if I'm still invited. Yeah, you are. To... They're brown. You get brownies afterwards. So, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you, can't, you can't beat the brownies and ice cream. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, All right. So... That's what I expected. <laughs> you, you said Well, it. yeah. And you are missed here. So, you know. <laughs> I've never even been in that room. Yeah, well, the room I'm in now. Well, yeah. you, didn't you say it was just a yeah. fake screen? It's a secret. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's a backdrop. backdrop. I assume. Yeah. Let Let's see if it actually is. Yeah, that's just a backdrop. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, would you lead us in a closing prayer? Um, we'll see yeah. you next week, uh, and. We'll let you know when it, it may be on. Uh, it may be on Tuesday, next. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Let's pray. Father, again, uh, thank you for uh, this time of study. We thank you. Uh, I thank you for for Denny and uh, and his wisdom and, and knowledge of the Word and um, and how he's he's so uh, willing and and eager to share. Uh, this with with the world, Father. We um, we thank you for James and um, and your uh, uh, inspiration for him to to write these words down for us. And um, we pray that we can uh, control our our anger 
um, help us to uh, consider why we're angry and, and, and what to do with this, with this dangerous uh, emotion and how to uh, live and look and love uh, like Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks a lot. Uh, love you all. We uh, look forward to uh, having you here with us uh, next week. Yeah. And uh, same bat time. Well, no. Well, yeah, different bat channel. Probably not. Bat channel. Probably. But we need to get on a bet. Yeah, we, we've now. sort of been off. Uh, There's a lot of stuff going work. on. You've had stuff. I've had yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll get back onto a, a regular schedule where people can sort of count on and depend on instead of this sort of. If they ever did <laughs> in the first place. We have half a person. <laughs> I think so. We have half a person watching right now. I think. Is that, is that possible? Anyway, hey, uh, uh, have a good evening. What's left of it, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week as we continue our study in James. God bless you all. We love you. See you there. Bye.